Hey there folks, Mr. Miliano here. In this video, we are going to walk through an example problem with forces at equilibrium. So let's go ahead and get started. Here's the problem. A person pushes a 35 kilogram lawnmower whose handle makes a 55 degree angle with the horizontal and he pushes it at a constant velocity of 1.5 meters per second. The strength of this push force is 70 newtons. And our goal is to determine the magnitude of every force on the lawnmower. And I want to remind you here that the word magnitude just means strength. How strong is each force? Let's go ahead and get started. The starting point with all physics problems, of course, is to draw a sketch, which is what I've done here. Here is my sketch of a person pushing a lawnmower. And we can see that I've drawn in the 55 degree angle that the lawnmower's handle makes relative to the horizontal, which means relative to that gray dashed horizontal line. Now that we have our picture, the next thing we're going to do is to choose the system we are going to analyze. The problem asks us to determine the magnitude of the strength of the force, or the magnitude of every force on the lawnmower. And so the lawnmower makes a good system. So that's what we're going to analyze. The next step usually is to make a list of givens and unknowns, but we don't really know yet what forces are going to be our unknown. So I'm going to recommend that we actually start with a force diagram, and then we'll make our list of knowns and unknowns. So here we go. This is where we're going to start with our force diagram. The dot there represents our system, the lawnmower, and we've got a spot to indicate all of our subscript definitions as we go. Before we draw our diagram, it's of course important to indicate our sign conventions or our frame of reference. In this case, we're going to choose right to be the positive x direction, and we're going to choose up toward the top of the screen to be the positive y direction. And with that, let's go ahead and get started with our force diagram. Our first force, of course, will be the gravitational force downward, and that gravitational force is exerted on the lawnmower by the Earth. Here the L is our subscript for lawnmower, and the E is our subscript for Earth. Remember that notation is always feeler, dealer is our last two subscripts. So the first subscript is the type of force, the gravitational force. The next subscript is the object feeling the force, which is the lawnmower. And that last subscript is the object dealing the force, which in this case is the Earth. Our next force, let's go ahead and indi indicate the push from the person. A push is a normal force, right? It's the surface of the person's hand squishing against the surface of the lawnmower's handle. So it is a normal force. It is on the lawnmower, and it is by the person. So we use the capital P as our subscript for person. We also have an upward normal force on the lawnmower by the ground. So we'll use the letter G to be uh, to indicate the ground. And it's pushing upright. The wheels of the lawnmower are supported by an upward push from the ground. In other words, the surface of the ground and the surface of the lawnmower are squishing together. Our last force, our object is moving to the right. There's a constant velocity. We're in some rough grass, some rough grass and so we should have some friction force uh, pushing in the opposite direction of the motion, which uh, is what we have here. So we have a friction force on the lawnmower and it's also by the ground. Those are all of our forces. Now, to analyze how our forces are balanced in the x direction and how they're balanced in the y direction later on, we're going to need to look at our angled force there and break it up into its x and y components. And so we can draw in the x component for the normal force on the lawnmower by the person by looking at that down and to the right arrow and asking ourselves how much of that down and to the right arrow points to the right which is that much. So there's our x component um, starting at the dot and going all the way over to the right edge of that diagonal normal force arrow on the lawnmower by the person. And now that we have that, we can also draw in the y component. That red normal force uh, by the person is pushing down and to the left. And so the y component should be how much of that force is pointing down. Once we have those drawn in, we can also indicate that the angle between the x component of the force, the horizontal component, and the full diagonal force must be the same 55 degree angle that we have in the picture. Once those components are drawn, we're going to pretty much exclusively work with those because they um, will allow us to add things in the x and y direction. So we can ignore the full diagonal force and just instead work with the components. To emphasize that, I'm going to fade out that diagonal arrow a little bit, and I'm going to make its components in red. 
We're going to deal with the pieces of the force rather than the full force from here on out. Now that we have our force diagram drawn, we know what forces are present, we can go ahead and make our list of givens and unknowns now. What is given to us? We know that the mass of the lawnmower is 35 kilograms. We know that the handle makes a 55 degree angle relative to the horizontal. That's going to be our angle theta. We know that the speed of the lawnmower is one and a half meters per second. And we know that the push from the person, the normal force on the lawnmower by the person, has a strength or a magnitude of 70 newtons. What we don't know is the gravitational force on the lawnmower by the earth. We don't know the normal force on the lawnmower by the ground. Excuse me. And we don't know the friction force on the lawnmower by the ground. So those are the three forces that we do not know and that we need to find the strength of. Let's go ahead and get started. When you know a mass, it's very easy to compute gravitational forces. So let's start there. We develop this mathematical model, which relates the mass of an object to the gravitational force it feels on a planet. Specifically here, the gravitational force on the lawnmower by the Earth is equal to the mass of the lawnmower m multiplied by the gravitational field strength of Earth, lowercase g. On Earth, little g, the gravitational field strength of Earth, has a value of 9.81 newtons per kilogram, and the mass of the lawnmower was 35 kilograms. When you multiply 35 times 9.81, you get 343 newtons. You should grab your calculator and do that calculation and all of these calculations yourself so that you can feel confident that you know how to use the calculator to get these values. Now that we have this, we're going to need to look at the rest of our forces. In order to do that, we should find the x of y components of the person's push force. We should find how strong those are first so that we can work with them in determining the other forces. Let's start by determining the y component of the normal force on the lawnmower by the person. If we look at the right triangle, which is formed by that force and its components, we can see that in order to find the y component, we're going to need to use the sine function because this is the side of the right triangle opposite the 55 degree angle and the known 70 newton force is the hypotenuse of the right triangle. And so if we take our equation for the definition of the sine of an angle, translate that into physics, the opposite side of the angle is the y component of the normal force on the lawnmower by the person, and the hypotenuse is the full strength of the normal force on the lawnmower by the person. We've now translated into physics. Our next step is to isolate the unknown variable on one side of the equation. Specifically, that is the y component of the normal force on the lawnmower by the person. That's what we don't know. So we multiply each side of the equation by the full normal force, which is in the denominator there. And when we do that, we end up with the full normal force multiplied by the sine of the angle theta should give us our unknown y component. Once we have that unknown y component by itself on one side of the equal sign, we can plug in our numbers. The strength of the normal force or the push force on the lawnmower by the person it was given to us as being 70 newtons and the angle theta was 55 degrees. When you take 70 newtons, multiply it by the sine of 55 degrees, you find out that the y component of the normal force on the lawnmower by the person is 57.3 newtons. There we go, we have that y component. We can do some similar trigonometry now to figure out the x component of the normal force on the lawnmower by the person. The appropriate trig function to do that would be cosine. Again, if we go back to our right triangle, the x component that is unknown is adjacent to or touching our 55 degree angle. And again, that known 70 Newton push force is the hypotenuse of the right triangle. So we start with the definition of cosine given here, and we translate that into physics. The adjacent side of the right triangle is that unknown x component of the push force, and then the hypotenuse is the full strength of the push force. Rearranging again so that we can get our unknown x component by itself on one side of the equal sign, um, we end up with this equation below, and we got there by multiplying each side of the equation by what's in the denominator here, the full normal force on the lawnmower by the person. When we do that, we find that the x component of the normal force on the lawnmower by the person is equal to the full normal force on the lawnmower by the person, multiplied by the cosine of our given angle. Plugging in our given values, again, the full normal force is 70 newtons, 
the angle given to us is 55 degrees, and we plug in 70 newtons multiplied by the cosine of 55 degrees into our calculator, you should end up with 40.2 newtons. And so the x component of that push force, the x component of the normal force on the lawnmower by the person is 40.2 newtons. And so now we have the strength of these components and we can sum our forces in the x and y directions to determine, there's the bell, there we go. We can uh, use the x and y components to determine how strong our other unknown forces are. Let's start by looking at the forces in the x direction. I've highlighted the relevant x direction forces on our force diagram in yellow there, and those are the forces we are going to focus on right now because we're going to start by adding up our forces in the x direction. And when you do that, you end up with the normal forces x components, that specifically is the normal force on the lawnmower by the person, its x component, plus the friction force on the lawnmower by the ground. That's our vector equation. Uh, the next step is to take that into a scalar equation by explicitly including any of the uh, negative signs for forces that point in the negative direction. We drop the vector arrowheads above each of our letters F, and we add up the scalar components in the X direction. We end up with a positive X component for the normal force on the lawnmower by the person, and a negative friction force on the lawnmower by the ground because that friction force is pointing to the left and we indicated that the right will be our positive x direction. We are moving at a constant velocity here. Because we are moving at a constant velocity, Newton's first law tells us that adding up all of the forces should give you zero. The forces are balanced. And so taking that to our x direction here, the sum of the forces in the x direction must be equal to zero because the forces are balanced. That is due to Newton's first law of motion. And so we can replace the sum of the forces in the x direction with the value zero. We can isolate our unknown variable, which is the friction force, by adding it to the left side of the equation, which is what we've shown here. And so the friction force on the lawnmower by the ground must be equal in strength to the x component of the normal force on the lawnmower by the person. We determined that the x component of the normal force on the lawnmower by the person must be 40.2 newtons. That's what we did in the yellowish box over here. And therefore, the friction force must also be 40.2 newtons. In other words, that left force and that right force have the same strength because they're balancing each other out. And they're balancing each other out because the lawnmower moves with a constant velocity. There we go. We have the friction force. We can now add up our forces in the y direction to determine the normal force on the lawnmower by the ground, that upward normal force from the surface. That's the last unknown force here. And so I've highlighted in yellow the three vertical forces, the three forces that are going to be relevant when we are adding our forces in the y direction. And when we do that, we end up with this vector equation. The sum of the forces in the y direction must be equal to the uh, normal force upward on the lawnmower by the ground, the y component of the normal force on the lawnmower by the person, that push force, and the gravitational force on the lawnmower by the earth. Now taking direction into account by writing the scalar equation, the normal force from the ground points up, so it's positive. The normal force from the person has a y component that points down, so it's negative, and the gravitational force from the earth points down, so it is also negative. Again, Newton's first law tells us that if we are moving at a constant velocity, then the forces must be balanced, and therefore the sum of the forces in the y direction, the left side of that equal sign, must be equal to zero. With this equation, we only have one unknown, specifically the normal force on the lawnmower by the ground. We can isolate that part of the equation by adding the other two forces to the left side, or to the other side of the equal sign. When we do that algebra, we end up with our unknown normal force on the lawnmower by the ground being equal in strength to the normal force on the lawnmower by the person's y component plus the gravitational force uh, on the lawnmower by the earth. And we know both of the forces on the right side of that equal sign. Uh, we know that the y component of the person's push force is 57.3 newtons. We found that using right angle trigonometry in the green box. And we know that the gravitational force on the lawnmower by the Earth is 343 newtons. And we know that from using our gravitational force model, which we did in the blue box. And when we add those two forces together, we end up with the normal force on the lawnmower by the ground, 
being equal to 400.3 newtons. And there we go. We have figured out the three forces that were unknown. So I'm going to now, to finish off, box in our three unknown forces. Say, Mr. Miliano, there's my answer right there, all boxed in, ready to go. I have one comment I'd like to make before we end. Specifically, I'd like for you to pay attention to how strong this upward normal force is from the ground and how strong this downward gravitational force from the Earth is. In many of the problems we've seen so far, those two have been equal to each other, but that's only by coincidence. That doesn't have to be true. And in this case, the upward normal force, 400 newtons, is bigger than the downward gravitational force of about 343 newtons. And so those aren't equal in this case. And in fact, they're not equal because the person is pushing down into the ground and that downward push squishes the surface more, which leads to an increase in the strength of the gravitational force compared to when the lawnmower is just sitting there and the person isn't pushing down on the lawnmower. And so we have a stronger squish than we would without the push, and so the upward normal force is stronger than it would be uh, without the person pushing. And so this upward normal force is a bigger force than the downward gravitational force in this example. And so... Take a look at the screen here. This would be the expectation for what I'd be asking for in a problem like this. Um, draw your picture, force diagram, subscript definitions, uh, you know, your reference frame, your choice and sign convention, list of givens and unknowns, break up angled forces into their x and y components, uh, and compute the strength of those components using right angle trigonometry, adding up forces in the x and y direction to figure out the strength of forces, um, and using our gravitational force model to figure out the force of gravity. Thank you for learning with me, and I hope this video was helpful.